Hello and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, owner of Kathleen Lee Consulting, and I am your host for this program. Think Tech Hawaii is currently live streamed on thinktechhawaii.com as well as on Think Tech Hawaii's Facebook and YouTube pages. And viewers like you have the opportunity to ask us questions by sending them to questions at thinktechhawaii.com. Now that we've gotten that intro out of the way, I am so pleased to introduce our guest for today. And it's great timing too. So as um, many of you may know, the Hawaii State Legislature wrapped up the 2021 session last Thursday. So here we with us on the show is Representative Adrian K. Tam. Hey, Adrian, welcome to the show. Kathleen, and thank you so much to you and to Tink Tech Hawaii for inviting me on here today. I'm very excited on what we were in the hot well. As am I, I am super excited as well. Um, and let's go through your introduction. I know people have been familiar with you. I know I mentioned to you that I first, you know, got familiar with you when I saw you during the campaign because you were out like on Ala Moana, since that's your district and you were sign waving and I thought that was great. So um, for the viewers who may not be familiar with you, but let's go ahead and give them an introduction on who Representative Tam is. Yes, hi, aloha. My name is Representative Adrian Tam. I represent the 22nd District of the Hawaii State Legislature in the House of Representatives, which covers Waikiki and Ala Moana. I'm a born and raised local boy, a proud graduate of our public schools, and a graduate of Penn State University. Um, prior to entering public service, I was a realtor specializing in first-time home buyers and sellers. Um, because I wasn't making enough money as a realtor and not many people were willing to trust someone as young as me with the biggest financial decision of their life, I decided to take a crack at community service and public service here at the legislature, first as an intern and a session hire, and then I worked my way up to becoming an office manager in the state senate. In 2020, I decided that, you know, I think I can offer something to the table, so I ran for office myself. Um, I currently sit am the vice chair of the Health, Human Services, and Homelessness Committee. I'm also the vice chair of the Culture, Arts, and International Affairs Committee, and a member of the Finance Committee here. So thank you so much. That's a, that's a lot of committees. And I know um, from my short experience as a, a legislator, staffer back in the day that you know freshman legislators do get in the finance committee to give them a, a great idea of of how the process works so um, let's pull up that photo of you and your colleagues your freshman colleagues so tell us a bit about like how you guys have been and what the dynamic has been you know I am really um, blessed to have a number of really great colleagues in our freshman class so we have Rep Bronco, who is a former diplomat. We have Rep Iligan, who represents Puna, who is a former council member. We have um, Representative Lopresti, who is a professor and a former legislator himself. Then we have Janae Capella, who represented Janae Capella, who is a um, human sex trafficking um, victims advocate. We have uh, Representative Jackson Sayama, who is the youngest in our group at 23 years of age. So I'm excited about his um, tenacity and his energy. We have Representative Sonny Ganadin, who is a um, attorney. And we have Representative Lisa Martin, who is a um, public health advocate. Yeah, and I know when we were talking, I, I was under the impression that you were the youngest one. And when yep. you mentioned that there were three other people, I was I was very impressed since it, it it's just a testament to how um, you know people that are uh, younger are are coming up and going into or getting involved in the process directly as as, as legislators. Um, it's also worth noting that you were you are currently the only openly LGBTQ plus member of the Hawaii State Legislature and not just the House. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. And I often say that representation matters. So I welcome the fact that um, six out of eight of us when we were elected are all on the, the age of um, 40 years old. You know, when you don't have a seat at the table, you're on the menu. And when young people are ignored, when people of color are ignored, when people uh, that are LGBT are ignored, 
that leads to bad legislation being passed. And I'm happy to be a part of this conversation so that we can pass good legislation that you know can benefit those communities. And earlier, you sort of touched upon why you ran for office, because you had your experience um, working as staff and you wanted to be more directly involved. How was it um, running against an incumbent that had been there for many years that people were familiar with? It was definitely a challenge. Um, but we were going into this campaign as the underdog. And, you know, I was very young and this was my first time running and voters tend to judge based on appearance. So when they see someone young, they tend to would rather have someone more experienced. But on our campaign, we worked hard. We didn't take anything for granted. We walked the district, we signed waves, we sent mailers. We did everything we can to show the voters that there is a better choice, that there is a choice. And when I first ran, you know, we had all this go on, but there are a lot of things pushing me not to run. But in the end, I wasn't afraid to lose. I was more afraid of not knowing the outcome if I didn't run. So I had to ask myself this question, which was, would I forgive myself if I didn't run? And the answer was, I wouldn't. So the only other option was that I needed to run. That's a very uh, profound question to ask yourself, and I'm glad you responded to it by running and now you're in office. So let's go over a couple of the bills that you introduced this session. Um, I think you mentioned HB 286 as a, let's do that as a first bill. So tell us about that. So HB 286 would restructure the Hawaii Tourism Authority, and we've often talked about having more quality tourists instead of quantity of tourists. And I think that this bill would basically make tourists pay their fair share to contribute to our economy and to our government. Um, it would allow counties to charge up to uh, 3% of tax, TAT taxes, and it would reduce funding to $60 million and have HTA primarily focused on marketing tourism. I think that this year is the year for us to kind of restructure our government. So this and a number of things were kind of the first step. I voted with reservations because, you know, HTA is a big part of my community and I didn't know how that would affect my community, but there was a lot of things going for it, especially when we have to restructure our government and we have to take this chance to basically do this. And if it doesn't work, we can always come back and revert it back to its original form. The other thing that HB 286 does is that it would abolish the Office of Aerospace, but protect Pisces by moving Pisces to the University of Hawaii Hilo and the Challenger program to the DOE. So the Office of Aerospace um, didn't have that much staff in it. It was um, mostly obsolete. It's been there for a very long time now, I think over 12 years. And, you know, it mostly was just office space and office supplies. So we had a huge budget deficit at the same time. So we wanted to take that funding back into the general funds so that we could fund programs like HIV prevention, we could protect sex assault treatments, uh, we could put more money into homelessness. So that's why I supported the bill. And you had another bill, on that note, you had another bill that touches upon social services. And I think you mentioned that was HB 282. And correct me if I'm wrong, if I got that number wrong. Is that the right bill? That is correct. Okay, so, so let's go over that and why you decided to, you introduced this bill, yes? Yes, this okay. was a bill that I introduced. It um, would allow minors to consent to no cost emergency homeless shelters. So prior to um, today, prior to this bill, Hawaii was a right to shelter place, but that language kind of fell short of providing shelters to minors because by definition, minors could not consent to these shelters because these shelters were deemed unsafe for them. And I thought to myself, well, you know, would they be safer on the street? 
And the answer is no, because when you're on the street, you're subjected to violence, drugs, and human trafficking. Many of these minors, it's not their fault that they are unaccompanied or homeless. Um, they've been, some of them have been kicked out of their family, by their families over rejection. Some of them have, uh, are escaping their household because of abuse. And some are, are escaping human trafficking. So the answer was not to let them out on the street again at night where they can sell themselves or be in a more imminent danger. And yes, occasionally you will have a minor that runs away from home um, just to kind of prove a point to their family, I guess. But regardless of those circumstances, I'd rather have that minor in a shelter than on the street. And under this bill, these no cost emergency shelters will have to continue to keep a registry for um, whoever gets admitted, especially when they are a minor and work with the Department of Human Services. So this is a bill that I'm very proud of because it is a bill that was given, that was um, proposed by RISE um, to Carla Hozier and Ian Ross. I think that it's a very common sense bill, especially when you, take it into perspective of who it affects, which is minors, which are some of the most vulnerable um, people in our population. Yeah, and I genuinely appreciate you focusing on that as well, especially um, since we do see a lot of um, the homeless, homelessness or houseless individuals um, out in the district that we both live in. I, mm -hmm. I think you're, you are actually my representative because I live in the area. So thank you for the work that you do and for focusing on you know, the youth that may need help. And so that's a huge deal. Um, there's another bill that you had mentioned and we have a few more minutes before we go into break, but let's touch on that. So it is the uh, Centers Around Workforce Development, HB 1176. So go over that bill, your reflections on it and why you think it's important. Yes, I think that this is probably one of the biggest bills and that we've passed this year as a legislature. We've passed payday loan reforms. We have transferred EMS services from um, the state to Oahu County. But this bill was like the first step, I think, in diversifying our economy through a green jobs pro course program. It was introduced by Representative Sean Quinlan with the support of a lot of members of the House and the Senate. So we were able to send that to the governor. and. Um, you know, by creating this green jobs program, I think that it helps build our workforce development so that our kids can have a place in Hawaii so they're not leaving the state for opportunities elsewhere. I'm hoping that in the interim, I, we can build on this bill and to bring, you know, grow our uh, green developments here too and clean energy developments here. So I'm hoping that we can work with UH to establish a program or an exist or reform an existing program that would allow UH to develop and research green technology such as um, hydropower, smart grids, green infrastructure, um, and, except, and solar, and work with businesses and entities and to allow them to use those um, research and developments free of charge as long as they a, a, operate out of Hawaii so they're headquartered here. And B, they hire a quota of the local workforce so that um, our people here have those jobs. So it creates jobs for our local people. It creates a new economy that is sustainable and can complement our tourism economy. And it helps us meet our clean energy goals by 2045. That's absolutely wonderful. And especially it, like with that bill coming um, in light of COVID-19, I think that'll be s such a great contribution to the state of Hawaii's economy. Mm -hmm. um, on that note, we are going to go on a short break, but when we come back, we will delve further into Representative Adrian K. Tan's reflections from the 2021 legislative session. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, and on the show, we have Representative Adrian K. Tam going over his reflections from the 2021 legislative session. So Rep. Tam, um, I mentioned that we did get a viewer question, but before we go into that, um, could you refresh or let our viewers know of what your priorities were going into the legislative session? And as a first time, um, legislator. So, you know, as a first time legislature, we come in very optimistic, very green, as I say it. Um, but when we were elected, we, we took office in Jan November and we started the session in January. And a lot of us had our bills drafted by January 1st so that we could circulate it for signatures. So they didn't really give us much time to really dive into big groundbreaking breaking legislation. So I guess my priorities kind of carried over into the interim so I can work on that. My priorities are very simple. It is diversifying our economy, um, public safety in my district, uh, making it more comfortable for my residents to live here, and stopping the, the brain drain in doing so as well for Hawaii. Because you know we constantly see our young folks leaving. That's our biggest export which is our people. And that's something that we don't see a return on investment on. And that's why I'm focusing in totally on diversifying our economy, because I think that's like, in the long run, that has to be what we need to do so that we have an economy that is sustainable. And when something does crash, like our tourism economy has, there's something that we can fall back on. Our economy is, we have three economies in here, which is construction, tourism, and military. And I like to describe our economy like a three-legged bar stool. When one of those legs is gone and broken, um, it no longer becomes a stool and it's no longer stable. Well, we need to add a fourth stool so that when something is broken, that leg still holds it up and it still is a stool. So that's kind of like my biggest priority right now. Um, homelessness and public safety continues to be a big priority of my districts, and that's something that I continue to want to focus on. More recently in Waikiki, we saw a rise in um, chronic criminal activity. And I think this is associated with a rise in tourism coming back because tourists are oftentimes the targets of crime because they don't come back for um, petty misdemeanor trials. And many people can often get away with it. I think that there is a way that we can fix this problem. It might have to be going through constitution, the constitution because um, technically a defendant has a right to confront their accuser in person. Um, but we have to do something to make sure that it's safer and that we stop targeting our tourists um, and visitors. So, because ultimately when they target them, it falls back into the community of Waikiki. So those are some of the priorities that I'm focused on when I came. And thank you for focusing on those. Cause like I mentioned, um, I do live in your district. So <laughs> thank you for making it a better place for people like me to live. Um, we do have a question from a viewer in regards to education. So I'm going to, I have a tendency to talk really fast. So I'm gonna go through it slowly because it's a, it's a two part question. So given the trends and calls nationwide for the addition of personal finance education to be taught in high schools, do you support a mandatory personal finance course or curriculum in high schools? And if you do, what do you see the outcome of that looking like? I absolutely support um, personal finance or financial literacy 
and competency in schools. Um, like I said at the beginning of this show, I am a proud graduate of public schools here. And I wish I had the opportunity to learn how to do taxes, to learn what a mortgage is, um, to learn how to take a, a loan, even just to learn how to play stocks. You know, I wish I learned all that. But, you know, it is something that will definitely benefit our kids. And the way I see it happening is that we would have to go through the DOE to kind of set up a curriculum at first. And then we need to add it to our curriculum and train our teachers on how to do it. So one thing we can do is partner up with the University of Hawaii's Shiner College of Business to kind of bring some of those resources into our public schools and to help train our teachers into teaching it as well. I think that's um, the first step, but I'm definitely open to how we can do that um, by working with my colleagues. I know a number of my colleagues have already been working on it. Um, Senator Bennett Misalucha has introduced a bill that would put financial literacy in our curriculum. Unfortunately, I don't think it made it at a conference. Um, and Representative Sayama has also introduced a resolution calling on the DOE to establish such curriculum. I think it's, it's I, I did not even know about those two things. And so thank you for bringing that to light. And I hope that further down, we do get to see that materialize. Cause like you mentioned, um, I too would have benefited from a class like that in high school, you know, like very basic, like how to file your taxes, like how to write a check, like really like adulting stuff that we, we didn't get to cover. So like, thank you to the legislature for working on that. And hopefully again, I hope something comes out of that. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, it's more, that's more useful than trigonometry. <laughs> Which, which, by the way, I, I, you know, trigonometry and I, we, we broke up sophomore year of high school. I was like, we're not, we're not going to be friends. So, yes, I, I agree with you. But you know, like, and not to say that doesn't have value. It, it does. I do want to, yeah. since it is Teacher yeah. Appreciation Week and month, I do want to appreciate all the math teachers out there <laughs> for every everything that they teach, especially when it comes to math. But. Um, I think, heroes. yeah, but I think yeah. personal finance or lessons or classes on that is uh, like are, are aligned with uh, math as well. So we can merge that, that into our statistics courses. Yeah, there you go. So I'm I'm glad that you're able to address that question. Um, do you have any? Oh, we have a that went by really quickly. Do you have any words of advice since we have about five minutes left on the show? Reptam, do you have any words of advice to individuals out there who are thinking of getting involved in the community, whether it's um, through running for office or other ways? That really did go by very quickly. And I want to thank Think Tech Hawaii for inviting me on and you, Kathleen, for hosting this show. Um, you know, my piece of advice for anyone that wants to get involved is you don't have to run for office to get involved. I know not many of you are comfortable doing that. Um, contact your local legislature if you have a idea or a bill work with them and you know convince them why it's a good idea and they might introduce it on your behalf and champion that uh, on your behalf at the legislature and that might be law next year um, the other thing that i would really advise everyone is if they do decide to run for office is to be authentic and to be yourself um, authenticity really resonates with the public and people are less likely going to elect a fraud because they can tell who is a fraud. And when they do elect someone that is a fraud, it often doesn't turn out well for them. Wise words from Representative Adrian K. Tam. Is there anything else that you would like to add while well, we have a few minutes left? Um, again, you know, thank you so much to Think Tech Hawaii for having me on. I think it's really great that, you know, we can talk about what the legislature has done this year. I, uh, you know, there are a number of things that we've done this year, given the circumstances with our pandemic. And, you know, oftentimes people will say that the legislature is a do nothing legislature, but I think that this year we've made a lot of progress and I'm hoping during the interim that I, you know, I can work with my colleagues 
to try to pass more major things in 2022. This is just the first half of our legislature here. And this is just the beginning for you. So again, thank you, Representative Town, for coming on the show today. This has been Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, and we'd like to thank Jay Fidel and the staff at Think Tech for making shows like this possible. We had Haley helping us out today. See you again in the next two weeks. Aloha. <laughs>